Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the Cape Chemistry Unit 2, Paper 2, from June 2021. We'll be working on Question 1, Part B. This is a combustion analysis question where we're being asked to find the molecular formula of a hydrocarbon, okay? So the question says that a gaseous hydrocarbon P of volume 10 cm cube of the formula CXHY, which is just our generic formula for hydrocarbons, was mixed with 70 cm cube of oxygen and exploded in a reaction chamber. After cooling it down to room temperature, the gaseous mixture occupied a volume of 55 cm cube. After shaking that mixture with aqueous sodium hydroxide, the volume was reduced to 35 cm cube. The remaining gas was shown to be oxygen. All the volumes were measured at constant pressure and the following reaction represents the combustion of P with oxygen. So we see that the combustion of P um, gives off carbon dioxide and steam. Now, in this equation that they've given us, they've given us what the stoichiometric coefficient should be. So the stoichiometric coefficient for oxygen should be X plus Y over 4. The stoichiometric coefficient for carbon dioxide should be X. And for steam, it should be Y over 2. So that will help us out later on. But first, what we have to do is realize what our objective is here, right? Because this is a gas phase reaction and they're giving us volumes of gases, right? We have to find a way to eventually convert these volumes into mole ratios, right? By using Avogadro's law. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out the volumes that they gave us underneath their respective, you know, um, gaseous components. And then we'll go from there. So let's do that. So in the question, they told us that the volume of gaseous hydrocarbon that was combusted was 10 cm cube. So we can just kind of, since we already have the equation there, we can just create like a line underneath it. So for this hydrocarbon, there was 10 cm cube of it that was reacted, right, or combusted. As it relates to the oxygen, we started out with 70 cm cube. So that's very important. I'm using that language. We started out with 70 cm cube, right? There's a hint towards the last of uh, towards the end of the question that lets us know that there was some remaining oxygen. So presumably this volume here was just the total volume used, right? Placed in the reaction chamber, but not all of it was reacted. Okay. So that's a total in reaction vessel, but not all of it was reacted. So let's just keep that in mind for now, okay? So in the reaction mixture, right? That was what we had, 70 cm cube of oxygen. No, here's where it gets interesting. The rest of the question says that after cooling to room temperature, right, the gaseous mixture occupied a volume of 55 cm cube. So the gaseous mixture that they're speaking about is the gaseous mixture that was formed, right, after the combustion reaction. And so the gaseous mixture, I'll just write it over here, right, that the gaseous mixture that was formed as a result of the combustion, so that's when we, sh we shook the 10 cm cube of hydrocarbon with the 70 cm cube of oxygen, the result of that, the combustion products, would have been our gaseous mixture, which included carbon dioxide, steam, right? And we know that there was some unreacted oxygen as well, right? Unreacted oxygen. Now, what this is saying, what this question is saying is that after we cool down this gaseous mixture to room temperature, it's going to occupy, it occupied a volume of 55 cm cube, right? So when we cool this down, essentially what we're doing is, let me write that down here. So when we do a cool down, what we're doing is we're condensing off the steam. We're condensing off this guy. And so when we do, do the cool down, we're subtracting out steam from that gaseous mixture. And so any volume that we get after we do that cooling down or that condensation step, 
which was 55 cm cube, that volume now only contains carbon dioxide and unreacted oxygen. Okay? All right. So now what they're saying is that after they've cooled it down to room temperature, we've taken out the steam, right? We condense off the steam. It's no water, so it's no longer in the gaseous mixture. We have 55 cm cube of carbon dioxide and unreacted oxygen remaining. Now, after that now, we're going to shake this mixture, right, with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So that's a shaking step there with NaOH. So I'm going to just show that to go. We're going to go from there. We're going to add NaOH to that mixture there, right? That carbon dioxide and unreacted oxygen mixture. And we're in so doing that, what we're doing essentially is we are, we're just kind of, we're sucking out the carbon dioxide out of that essentially to form sodium carbonate and water. That's that reaction that's going to take place, right? Na2CO3 plus H2O, that's what's being formed. And so the net effect then is that we are taking out carbon dioxide from that um, gaseous mixture, okay? So we're taking out CO2. And so if they told us that when we add the aqueous sodium hydroxide, the volume went to 35 cm cube, right? Let's write that here. That means that, what did we take out? We took out... It, was, it would be 55 minus 35 means that we took out 20, right? We took out 20 cm cube, and that would have all corresponded with the carbon dioxide, okay? So the 35 cm cube now that we have left is going to be corresponding then to what? What's left? If we take out the carbon dioxide now, the only thing that's left was the unreacted oxygen unreacted O2. All right. So let's see what else we can fill in up here. Now we know that when we added the NaOH, we took out 20 cm cube of carbon dioxide because that was all there was in the mix. So we can write 20 cm cube underneath the carbon dioxide column. Right? That was how much was produced because that's what the NaOH took out. Okay? Now let's go back to the oxygen column. This is an interesting one. So in total, in the reaction vessel, we had put 70 cm cube of oxygen. In the end, we had 35 left over that was unreacted, right? And so if I want to find out how much was reacted, what am I going to do? I'm going to say that the amount that reacted, right, is going to be equal to, so the reacted volume of oxygen is going to be equal to what we started with, which was 70 minus the 35 that was left over, right? So what we started with minus what was left over, which is the 35. And so we're going to get that there's 35 cm cube of O2 that actually reacted, okay? And so when we're finding our stoichiometry, this is the volume that we have to use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take out this 70 from here and put 35, okay? So let's just do that. Let's remove this, right? And we're going to put what actually reacted. Because remember, our stoichiometry represents what actually reacted, right? So we have to put our 35 cm cube here, okay? So now we're ready to work. We have a volume for hydrocarbon. We have a volume for reacted oxygen. And we have a volume for the amount of carbon dioxide that was formed, right? And so now we need to just convert these volumes into molar ratios, right? And so because they said that all volumes were measured at constant pressure, we know that we can apply Avogadro's law, and that is what's going to enable us to go from volume to molar ratios. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, look for the smallest volume here. And then just divide everything through by that. So we're going to divide the 10 cm cube through by itself because that's the smallest volume here. We're going to divide this one through by 10 cm cubed. And we're going to divide this one through by 10 cm cubed. So essentially, what we're saying, right? Well, essentially, what we're saying is to let, right, 10 cm cubed be representative 
of one mole, right? And so if tensium cube is representative of one mole and we divide it by itself, then we know that there's one mole is the ratio to be placed here or the value to be placed here. And this now is going to be what? 3.5 moles, right? Because remember 10 represents one mole. So 335 would be 3.5 moles. Um, and then 20 would be two moles, right? Because that's two times the 10. So that would be two moles of gas, right? And so effectively then, what did we do? We just found our stoichiometric coefficients for this balanced equation, right? So going off of the information that they gave us, let's look at the simplest one. The simplest correlation is that the X goes with the two, right? So right away we know that X is equal to two. And then if we go over here, what do we have? We have that X, plus y, so this is what goes in, in all of here. So we have that x plus y over four is equal to 3.5, right? Because that's that stoichiometric coefficient. We already know what x is, we know that x is two. So if we were to just plug in two here, we would get two plus y over four is equal to 3.5. And if we solve that through for y, what we'll find is that y is actually equal to six, okay? So right away, we know what our, what our formula is for P, right? So what are we gonna do? Our x, we now know is two and our y is six. So this formula is basically then just C two H six, all right? So that's what we know now. So that's really all there is to it. That's the molecular formula of P. I'll just write it beside it over here again. It's C2H6, okay? And so what we could do is we could go through and fill out um, all of this and just double check that our answer is correct. Um, and so what I put here, I said two would go here. Let's just rewrite the whole thing up here, right? It would be C2H6 plus, what is this? This would be two plus um, six over four, it's 3.5, right? We already know that that's 3.5. So we could write 3.502 goes to what? Two moles of carbon dioxide because X is two. And then Y we got to be six. So six over two would be three. So that would be three moles of steam, okay? So that's our actual balanced equation now once we filled in all the unknown values of X and Y. And if we look, just to double check that it's all balanced, we see that there are two carbons over here. There are two carbons over here. There are six hydrogens over here and there are three times two, six hydrogens over here. There are seven oxygens over here and then there are four here. So two times two, four and three, so that's seven. So with that, we know that we did everything correctly and that our molecular formula of hydrocarbon P is actually six um, C2H6, right? And so with that, we are done with this question. Please be sure to like this video, comment to let us know if it was all clear to you. Definitely subscribe to the channel so that you'll be the first to know when we upload new content.